I'm Satoshi, and in this video, we're going to walk through the mempool policy configuration settings in Bitcoin Knots so you can understand what they do and make more informed choices as a node runner. Bitcoin isn't decentralized because it's on a blockchain. It's decentralized because thousands of nodes independently verify the rules. There are two types of rules your node enforces. The consensus rules, which are non-negotiable, they define what makes a block or transaction valid. And then there's the policy rules, which are up to you. They decide what your node relays and accepts into its mempool. So here's how it plays out in real time. This is my node's mempool. It's personal queue of unconfirmed transactions. Based on the policy rules I've chosen, my node is consistently building a block template. This is my node's own version of what the next block should look like. Now my node isn't mining blocks, but this template still matters. When a miner does broadcast a block, my node will check, does this meet consensus? And if not, it's rejected no matter who mined it. And if it passes, confirmed transactions will get cleared out of my mempool and my node will start building the next block template. But here is the powerful part. It's your policy that shapes what transaction your node will even see in this mempool. And over time, that influences what miners will include and what actually gets mined. I'll be showing these settings inside of my Start9 server, but everything we cover applies to any hardware you run knots on. So running Bitcoin knots means you're choosing a version of Bitcoin that prioritizes efficiency, security, and flexibility. These settings may seem technical, but they're also philosophical. They reflect your values and your vision of what Bitcoin should be. So let's dive in and see how configuring your node is more than just maintenance. It's participation in the quiet revolution. This setting called data carrier controls whether your node accepts transactions that include arbitrary data using OpReturn. It can be used for simple and valuable purposes, like storing a hash of a document, anchoring an identity, or linking to a second layer protocol. But it also opens the door to things like NFTs, token metadata, and large data blobs that bloat the chain and raise fees for everyone else. If you disable data carrier completely, your node will block any transaction using OpReturn, no exceptions. And that's a strong stance, but it guarantees your mempool stays focused on Bitcoin as money. Data carrier size setting defines the maximum amount of data your node will allow in an op return field. It's how you draw the line between small useful bits like a SHA-256 hash or a static public key and bloated junk like JPEG inscriptions. By default, Bitcoin not sets this limit to 42 bytes, just enough for meaningful proofs, but too small for spam. Bitcoin Core, on the other hand, still enforces the older 83-byte limit, but as of version 29.0, this setting is no longer configurable. Core developers have signaled interest in possibly removing op return filtering altogether in the future, but for now, it remains hard-coded. Bare multi-sig is the original way Bitcoin handled multi-signature transactions. Instead of using addresses like we do today, the full script, like two of three keys must sign, and all the public keys were included directly in that transaction. It worked, but it made transactions bulky and exposed details about how your coins were secured. Today, we use better formats like P2SH, SigWit, and Taproot that hide the information until spend time. Bitcoin Knots disables bare multisig by default. Bitcoin Core allows bare multisig by default, but it can be disabled manually. So unless you're dealing with very old legacy wallets, there's usually no reason to keep it on. Reject Parasites is a unique setting in Bitcoin Knots that filters out transactions designed to waste your node's resources. Things like low fee spam, dust outputs, 
inefficient patterns, and long transaction chains that clog up your mempool. These aren't real payments and they serve no real purpose. We have seen this kind of abuse before during the 2015 stress tests when the network was flooded with junk to push Bitcoin to its limits. Bitcoin Core doesn't offer this kind of filtering. It relays anything that is valid by consensus. But with Knots, you get more control over what your node chooses to process, relay, and spend time on. Reject tokens. Bitcoin wasn't designed for tokens, but protocols like ordinals, BRC20, and now Ruins use clever tricks to embed NFTs and meme coins directly into Bitcoin transactions. These inscriptions take up block space, drive up fees, and offer no real benefit to Bitcoin as money. Bitcoin Knots includes a setting called Reject Tokens that helps you block this kind of traffic. It filters out transactions that match known token formats. This setting is disabled by default to stay compatible with apps that might rely on token style transactions. But if you don't want your node to waste time on JPEGs and hype, you can flip it on. Bitcoin Core doesn't offer this setting at all. Here are a few examples of what these NFTs or ordinals look like, and here are a few of the projects that are using these. Persist mempool is what tells your node to save the mempool when it shuts down. When you restart, it reloads those unconfirmed transactions, so your node stays in sync with the network without starting from scratch. Mempool expiration sets how long your node keeps an unconfirmed transaction. If it hasn't confirmed after this amount of time, your node will drop it. Enable full RBF or replace by fee lets you speed up a stuck Bitcoin transaction by replacing it with a new one that pays a higher fee. Normally, you would have to mark a transaction as replaceable ahead of time, but with full RBF, you can bump the fee on any unconfirmed transaction. It's useful when the network is busy and your original fee isn't enough to get confirmed. Some people don't like it because it makes zero confirmation payments less reliable, the kind merchants might accept in instantly without waiting for a block to be confirmed. But overall, it gives users more flexibility and control when sending Bitcoin. Minimum transaction relay fee sets the lowest fee your node will accept to relay a transaction. It filters out low value spam before it even hits your mempool. Both Bitcoin Core and Not support the settings and you can adjust it in either one. So some Bitcoin transactions are more complex than others especially those with a lot of signatures to verify. The bytes per sig op setting helps protect against that. It sets a ratio, like one signature check per 20 bytes. And if a transaction goes over that, your node will relay it, but treat it like low priority. But if you turn on bytes per sig op strict, it becomes a hard rule. Your node won't just penalize those transactions, it will reject them from your mempool completely. Bitcoin Core uses the same 20 bytes per sig op limit, but it doesn't let you change it or enforce it strictly. Knots gives you both the fine tuning and the option to go strict if you want your node to stay lean. In Bitcoin, unconfirmed transactions can be linked together in chains. When one transaction depends on another one that hasn't confirmed yet, we call the earlier one an ancestor and the newer one a descendant. These chains can start stacking up. That's where ancestor and descendant limits come in. They set boundaries for how many unconfirmed transactions can be chained together and how big those chains can get. Without these limits, someone could flood your mempool with a giant web of transactions transactions that aren't real payments. Both Core and Knots lets you adjust these limits. But Knots goes further with the feature of reject parasites, which can block spammy transaction patterns even if they technically fit in this ancestor and descendant rule. Permit bear pub key is a setting that controls whether your node relays an old transaction format that puts all the signing info right out into the open. Like permit bear multi-sig, 
These transactions are part of Bitcoin's history, but they're mostly phased out and disabled by default in knots. And it's defaulted to on in core and not as easily configurable. Max script size sets the biggest script your node will relay or accept into the mempool. The default is 1,650 bytes in both core and knots, but core hard codes it. Bitcoin Knots gives you the option to adjust it. So if you want to reject large exotic scripts that eat resources or allow more experimental ones, the choice is yours. Data carrier costs is a setting in Bitcoin Knots that lets you make storing data on chain more expensive. It adds a fee multiplier to op return data. So if someone wants to embed a message, file hash or inscription, they have to pay more to get through your mempool. By raising this cost, your node treats each byte of data as heavier, which means data heavy transactions need to pay a higher fee to be accepted or relayed. There is no setting for this in core, but Knots puts that choice in your hands. Accept non-standard data carrier. If you're experimenting with token protocols, custom op return formats, or other non-standard uses of Bitcoin, this setting lets your node accept and relay that data, but it's turned off by default and for a good reason. These types of transactions can open the door to more spam and bloat. You should only turn this on if you know what you're doing and have a specific reason to support experimental or non-monetary use cases. Dust relay fee. Dust is a tiny amount of Bitcoin that isn't worth spending because the fee to move it would cost more than the value itself. By default, the dust limit is around 3,000 sats. So if you try to send just a few hundred sats, your node and most others will likely reject it. Bitcoin's base layer is built for final settlements, not micropayments. That's what the Lightning Network is for. So out of all of these settings, the ones I might change is toggle on reject tokens, and I might increase the data carrier cost to double because I value Bitcoin as money and data on the base layer should have to pay more. So that wraps up the mempool configuration settings in Bitcoin Knots. Under the hood, Bitcoin Knots is largely the same software as Bitcoin Core, just with more options unlocked. That means you can switch between the two seamlessly without changing your wallet or setup. But with knots, you get tools Core doesn't expose. Bitcoin's strength is distributed, and so is its wisdom. Learn it, use it, shape it. If you're still running Core on your Start9 and you want to switch to knots, I did a quick video tutorial that you can find here. And I hope you learned something useful in this video. And hey, if I missed something, got it wrong, or you've got thoughts on how you configure your own node, drop a comment and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.